Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one ritzel at a time. Back with his good friend in front of the channel, Mr. Lumberjack. How you doing, sir? I'm doing awesome, except for it's a little cold outside, Mike. <laughs> Negative 17, a we little should. cold. Oh, shit. That's not good. That's why this helps. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I get it. It's insulation. Exactly. Still rosy cheeks, but I can't. Thankfully, I don't have hair up here. There but yeah, go. that's what it is. There you go. Well, hey, one of the things I wanted to talk about is a. I, I frankly want to celebrate what you and your wife are doing. You, your wife, you and your wife have created a, a weekly or nearly weekly series called Mr. and Mrs. Lumberjack. Mm -hmm. I think the ability for others mm -hmm. to see a couple that invests together, a couple that wasn't on the same page day one, right? I was lucky enough to interview Ashley sure. um, and to talk about how that has happened. So I, you've been doing it for a month now, roughly, I think you've, you've probably got eight to 10 hours together. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what what have what have been the um, I don't know aha moments or questions or memories that have been sparked up by uh, by the audience. I'm just curious what are some things that happened. Um, so probably uh, some of the memories they're funny memories. I'm sure. Yeah, know? yeah. They're like when I used to make a joke about my wife being an anchor. Uh -huh. I was just like, we need to invest in this property. And she would be the anchor. She'd be like, no. And I'm like, come, you're killing come me. on, you're killing yeah. me. And she, so now what's really funny is when we drive through town and she sees the ones that she said no to, mm -hmm. she's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that, again, that's what, I mean, let's be clear. That is, um, that's a reality for lots of investors. Usually, I have not seen many situations where the party is on the same page with the no. same veracity. It's not usually no. like that, right? It's, and it's 90, either way. 95% are not same level. It's, but the, but you look at the ones that are 5%, if they they're if you look at the five percent where they're all on board, they're all gung ho, they're all rowing at the same velocity, the same the same direction. Mm -hmm. Those people end up th those companies end up huge and very successful, and largely speaking, so long mm -hmm. as they're not doing something fraudulent. Yeah, exactly. And Ron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we have seen plenty of those people where it's like they have a show on TV, they do this, they do that, and then they get kind of sold on the Hollywoodness of yeah. it. Yeah. And then boom, all of a sudden they're fraudulent. But yeah, though that 5%, I was just going to say the biggest surprise for me is the percentage of which couples aren't on the same page financially of how they're going to accomplish their financial goals. Yeah. That's the thing that speaks up. 95% of couples, I think, aren't on the same page of how to financially accomplish the goals that they have for themselves as a, as a couple. Yeah. It, it, the other thing that I've seen is I actually want to push back on that idea because I think it's important. Yeah. I think I think couples, for the most part, have the same goal. We want to be financially free, one hundred percent. Right? It's they have the same goal. The problem Absolutely. is, I'm going to take this path. Yes, and uh -huh. I want to take this path. Yep. Y'all need to talk about money more often, right? I'd Go say, get uncomfortable. Yeah. I'd say even I'd say even more. I'd say even more to that point is, um usually one person has a path. The other person is not doing anything. They just want it. They're not doing the work period. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, I'll be, I'll listen. I, I, I'll, that's on me. Don't leave nasty <laughs> remarks from like, leave them for me. Call me an idiot. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care. It's been my much worse, but that's what I see in talking with folks. It's, uh, but we want to be there to encourage them, you know, and yeah. Give them hope. Yeah. I think what, what I've seen most of the time, cause this is, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. If you can become that couple that's rowing the same direction at the same time, it, you oh. know, at first off, if you're rowing in the same direction, that's critical. It doesn't actually have to be the same rate. That's ideal. Yes. But God damn it. As long as you're both rowing the same way, that is helpful. And yes. that's what I want to help people do. And that's what I think Mr. and Mrs. Lumberjack will do because Ashley was very honest. Yes. She's like, I didn't get it. I cried. I, I, I wasn't there. I was uh -huh. shivering when I, you know, like shaking with like, Oh, this is going to be bad. Yep. And, um, to see her evolve over time. And I think the other thing you talked about that I want people to hear from you is she got on board much later than you thought. Yeah. So talk about that. Yeah. So she, for years where I thought she was being supportive. Yeah. She was just, she was just not being an anchor. She was, like, yeah. She went from being an active anchor to biting her tongue. Yes. Yep. And you know what, for me, that was good enough. <laughs> It's all right, honey, you keep your oars in the boat. I'll row by myself. That's it's why I have that mindset of all the eve, all for all you need to for evil to win is for good to do nothing. Mm. I live that in my marriage with investing. 
is that all I all I needed to win was for her to not do if the evil investor in her was to just not do anything and just and that was it was just her do nothing that was good enough for me to get momentum yeah. um, and I think now what's really funny is in having that conversation she recognizes it mm-hmm. I love my wife to death nothing yeah. is changing our relationship but that was really tough growing the business during that phase because we said no to a lot of things we started saying no to fewer things. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause there were some really kind of plans out there that there were a couple um, one of them was like the pro that one project would have made us a million dollars in the last 10 years. And so that's, it uh, uh, hurts a little bit, you know? So when I, when I forget, like when I forget like some special event or something, I should have gotten her a gift. I was like, just take it off the tab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We just, honestly, we've just, we've lived through this together. And yeah. so no one's perfect. And, you know, I bought stuff that ended up being bigger projects than what I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. The nice thing is, is that I've always been able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So I want to give other couples hope that you're never going to get on the same page if you're not discussing it. Right. And you're certainly never going to get effective together if you don't really understand where each other's coming from. Her big thing was she never wanted to be poor again and not be able to make ends meet. My big thing was I never wanted to be poor again and not be able to make things ends meet. We had exactly the same fear. It's just how we dealt with the fear. That no, that's, that is what I see in a lot of couples. Again, a lot of couples can point at the same thing. They get agreement on the same thing. Yeah. And then they stop talking. Yeah. Right. right. You have to talk. You Mm -hmm. You have to talk because again, one of you, maybe has uh, parents or family members that were destroyed in this or that. And you're like, no, honey, I just want you to have this. This is, you know, I just want you to have a 40 hour a week job, go to work, come home. Right. That's enough for me. And the other one is like, I'm going to bust my ass during the day, work 60 hours a week, save a bunch of money, buy some assets. And I want to be done by 45. If you don't talk about that, Mm -hmm. that's going to, that's the anchor, right? Either way. That's right. You know, we have to talk about money what we make, what we save, what we spend, what we invest. It's just, it's, I don't know. How, how often do you talk about money in some way with your wife today? Every day. Exactly. Literally every day. Exactly. In fact, we've already, she's, she's in the hospital with the baby. We've already talked about money today. It's 1130 AM for you and you've yeah. already done it. 1130 AM Eastern time. We've already talked about money today, yeah. right now. We've already talked about it. And so I, so I think we've kind of covered the anchor piece, yep. but let's cover the unabashed idiot. Let's cover the guy or girl who is caution of the wind. And I've watched so much HGTV Ooh, yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. Because the anchor, that personality part of things isn't always bad. No, not at all. It can sometimes hold you back from yourself being unbridled. Yeah. And so I call them the where, shooting stars. Yeah. That's where you have to have that balance. And so there are those people out there, guy or girl that have watched too much HGTV. They've watched too many videos. They've watched too much stuff and they get so amped up about things so easily. They are the ones that played the saxophone, played the clarinet. They were an artist. They were an art teacher. They were a music teacher. They were a, you know, fill in the blank. They've done 75 different things in the last 10 years Mm -hmm. and none of them worked out. The, the common theme is a, none of them worked out, but B, there was a lack of commitment to getting to that point where you start to see things turn. Mm -hmm. And I think that Ashley and I talk about all the time, the moment that it really shifted for her was when she actually saw that I knew everything cold the numbers, the rehab costs, how we were going to do it. And that she kept on seeing things come true. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep on seeing things come true. You keep on seeing that I bought a crack house and I turned it into the nicest house on the block. And now it rents for $4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the kind of thing. And so it, that confidence comes, they want to be the anchor because they fear that there's risk there and they fear that their partner might not be in position to really understand what we could be looking at Mm -hmm. from a market perspective, from a project perspective, from a purchase perspective, you know, she's funny. She still kind of like gets a little bit eh when she signs on the mortgages, 
I'm just like, listen, can I robo sign? Is there like a button I can push? <laughs> like I, I look at the Ulta statement and then nothing else because all the other stuff is whatever. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing is I think it's not, so I think the anchors, you know, there's their downside, but then there's also the gift that they have of kind of just making sure that you're measuring three times and cutting mm-hmm. once. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to the person that just jumps out there with a saw and is like, yeah, I don't have a level. I don't have a pencil. I don't even have a tape measure, but I'm going to start cutting stuff because I'm building something today. Yeah. That's what we have to have that equal balance. And so I've seen, I've actually seen just as many people end up in a bad spot because they went in as dreamers with no skills, talents, abilities, or information and yeah. data and skill set. I've seen just as many people end up on that side of the mess. Than the other side. Now, the difference is, is in the last five years, you could have sucked at what you do and you still made a ton of money doing it in the last five years because the market bailed your ass out. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, I'm a great operator. I'll be fine whether the market's negative 10 plus 20 or mega, minus 30. Doesn't matter. I'm a great operator. Doesn't matter. Yep. Many others will get hurt by that because they were caution to the wind. It worked on the first one. And let's just do it again. And there's been some people on your channel that I expect if I'm sad that I'm not in those markets because I'll be buying, I would be buying their properties in two or three years. Cause there's been some like one-offs that you've done where it's just like the structure of debt's horrible. The model I don't really like. And it's just like, that's going to happen to people. So it's not, so for any spouse that's pointing their finger to the other spouse going, see, you're an anchor like Ashley was and you need to come on board. You might be the problem. You might be the problem because they don't have confidence that you've done all the work to show yourself approved to make sure that they feel safe and secure that they're willing to sign on and put things at risk. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things that I've seen be very helpful in my course. Um, I want, if you buy, let's be clear. If you buy my course and you want your significant other involved, send me a Facebook message and I'll, and and we can add them to the group. I don't, you don't need to buy it twice. That's not cool. Just buy it once. Um, But what I tell people all the time is if you're in a relationship and again, want to use an anchor or the other one's just a dreamer just to use those as analogies. What I, what I tell folks is get your buy box, learn your market, and then talk about it weekly. Cause what will happen is if you're the operator and it's Ashley in this example, over the course of 60 or 90 days, they will start to see, you know, what you're doing, right? The first week you have the conversation, you'll have lots of, I thinks, and I, I don't knows and all of that. By the sixth week, that's like, hey, I have a new, I know a property manager. I know uh, what, what property taxes are. I know what insurance quote. Your, your ands and ofs and guesses will be different. And then 60 days, it'd be like, hey, the average deal in our market is 5%. Right. And this one over here, it's mispriced. The bedroom counts wrong, whatever. It's an eight. That will build this. And also for the people that are dreamers, y'all are growing too fast. Way too I, fast. I know people. I, I wrote about it in my first book. This guy was like, hey, it's an executive at the at where I work. He's like, I can afford four negative cash flow properties. I'm like, freaking idiot. What the hell are you doing? Don't do that stuff on, don't do that on purpose. Real estate's risky enough as it is. Exactly. <laughs> don't set the debt up where it's negative no matter what happens. That's just bad. So again, you, you need to slow down. And, and mm-hmm. um, again, I think being consistent, doing the work, not, not writing an offer, not doing a deal for 60 or 90 days, totally okay. Yep. Learn your market, right? Do the work as the hat says, do the work. Yep. If they're not on board, right? So one of the things that we talk about a lot on the live stream is if they're not on board, then what is their solution to financial freedom? Number yeah. One. What, what are they doing? Yeah. Ask about their path. Yeah. Yep. What is your path then? Yeah. Number two is I have an idea. Explore both. If they, if they have an idea, explore their idea and explore your idea. If theirs is becoming high frequency traders in crypto, explore the idea. Yeah. There's plenty of people that have made millions of dollars trading stocks. Yep. Tons. 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 But let's face it, the market's built a lot of people out in the last three years. <laughs> yeah. And so all I'm saying is, is that you need to be educated. You need to do the work. You need to put in the time. And I validated Ashley. Ashley didn't have an alternative. Ashley's plan was we both keep working until we're 65 and retire. Yeah. didn't get the vote yeah no but you were no. willing to listen of course you ha- you have to be she's my partner in life she's my partner in life you know she's more than any business partner is ever going to be she's my partner in life and so 
I absolutely listened. We absolutely talked about it. I would, but she needs to feel safe where she can say, this is what concerns me. And you have to be willing to listen. And it can't be like, oh, that's stupid. No, it's stupid for you because that's not how you think and feel. Yeah. I don't, my wife and I are exactly opposite. She is 90% feelings and nice and 10%. She might say something if you cross her. I'm 90%. I, if I even think that that happened, I'm, I'm in your face because that's just the way I do business because I, I'm, I can be held to the same standard. Yeah. So I think in those couples out there, I think what you have to do is listen to each other's ideas, pursue both, pursue both and keep on bringing the ideas back to the group. Because here's what I can tell you. If you're not doing that 10 years from now, nothing's going to change. You're still both working. And now you have that much less of a window to do anything. In. And then look at those investments of what you thought about 10 years ago and how those have panned out for you now. Yeah, the other thing I think is, um, I, I haven't read it in a while, so this stat may be old, but a lot of divorces happen because of money. Right? Yeah, it's like 60 something percent. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's high you, would, you would think it would be infidelity, but right. when they kind of poke at it, and again, I don't know if these numbers are right, but even if it's not more than 50, it's still a big enough number. Talk about it. Talk, talk, talk. I, I think it's awesome. You've already talked about money. It's 1130. Yeah. Every single day we talk about money. I mean, partially it's also because we self-manage no, yeah. you know? and it's, and it's, and it's, the, that counts. And it's the 11th, Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like, who's paid, who hasn't. Yeah. There's a couple of people that haven't paid yet. Mm -hmm. Who's getting so, the three day notice. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, we, but we talk about it all the time and I think it's really cool too, because my kids hear us talk. Exactly. The next generation. Right. And it doesn't, and it's not, ever or 98 percent of the time it's not contentious oh no it's yeah. very much like oh hey oh hey honey this or hey honey that and and it's just really funny like sam is now in the car where he's just like daddy this is a nice street and that's a nice house we should buy it and rent it so he's already picking up on just the stuff that he's been around for his entire life the leg up that he has over what you and i had holy toledo now the only thing is is we have to find the thing that you know, stokes his, I have to find what stoke is going to stoke his fire, yeah, which is course. likely going to be, you know, daddy and mommy have money. You have nothing. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I think, I think, I think I posted on my Instagram. It's, it's probably been six months. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. He actually, I think there was a quote. I think it was Shaq. He's like to one of his, his adult children. Right. I think yeah. he was, I think he was early twenties. It's like, okay. just remember I'm rich. You're not <laughs> like, I like that. <laughs> We've been telling that to Samuel since he was born. Like, yeah. you know, just like, just like, just remember daddy's rich. You're not. You yes. Know? I, it's like we have that conversation all the time because. And how old is Samuel? So, Sorry. Samuel's four now. He's four. <laughs> and he, he, and he knows. literally, he literally will come up to me and goes, daddy's stuff. Daddy's stuff. Yep. Exactly. It's daddy's stuff. It's not yours. <laughs> yeah. Cause I wanted to earn it. I want him to earn it. And so he earns things, you know, he'll come, he'll even come on job sites and like help, like we can like strip wallpaper or something. Sure. He'll come onto a job site and he's four. I know child labor law, whatever. He's your so kid. He'll, matter. He'll, yeah, exactly. He'll come in he'll just pick it up, put it in the bag. I'm like, all right, that's awesome. Let's go to the bank and do a deposit. And we get a lollipop. And so I always joke with him. I was like, I give them 10 grand. You get a lollipop. How awesome is that? This is awesome, man. Thank you very much for doing this. How can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and live stream with Mrs. Lumberjack is usually 8 p.m. on Thursday. Not this week, but we'll still do the 1130 a.m. Eastern time Lumberjack Landlord live stream and watch Instagram uh, at Lumberjack Landlord. Watch that this week because we're, there's going to 17 degrees below zero. There's bound to be some stuff I'll be posting for there sure. You, there you go, buddy. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm.